to show you how to connect the HRI 200 box, I'm just going to show you now. So you've got the grey cable, 10 pin, and you want it into the radio number one slot, really, um, going to the 10 pin connection. This is the FTM 400, 300 or 100. So that's that pin. You've got your USB connector here, which is going to power the unit and also... Right, we've had our email from WiresX, which is great, and we can now log into the account with the username and password that we set up. So we're logged in now, and go to Node Owners page, and this is where you can download the software you're going to need for your HRI 200 box. So let's have a look. PC software is here. Now, remember, if you've got any other software running for WiresX on your PC, uninstall that first, and also you're going to make sure you need to know... Make sure you've got the driver for your HRI box as well, a prolific driver. So we'll just click here and we'll run this software, see if I can run it live, if it's not going to run too slow. So that's the, we don't monitor, we want the actual software, so I think I clicked the wrong one, did I? Uh, Wisex PC software, Wisex connection kit firmware, download the latest firmware, I haven't thought about doing that yet. Anyway, that's another thing. Uh, probably down on your radio that needs that, I would say. So let's just do, uh, have a look again. Where is it? Wiresx PC software. Did I click the wrong one? 1 1.5. That's the one. 1.5.40. Let's let that run live. I right, just fast forward if it's if it's a bit tedious. We'll run it, and then we should be able to uh, log in quite quickly. I've got everything connected. Um, we're in WiresX mode on the FTM 300 we're doing today. So there you go. There's our zip. That's more like it. That's the one. Just click the double click the install one. Pretty sure we've got the driver on it already. But if not, we can go driver setup and click install. It will make sure. Yeah, there. You go. Connect HRI to 202 USB port. Click OK. So I've, I've done that. Yeah, that's all connected. Um, then go to. And you saw that in the earlier video. So, Wisex software set up next. Accept the terms next. Enable Wisex to auto start. Let's go next. Hopefully, you don't have to reboot. Finish. So, now we just need our numbers that we got from Wisex. So, let's have a look at our numbers here. Where's our Wisex thing? Go start. Oh, we need to look at. Let's go to device manager. Device manager here. Ports. There it is. There we're on COM9, so it's showing that it's communicating. Don't need any of these windows anymore. Just need to find the shortcut, really. So there it is. There Wisex. Let's find our numbers. So it will boot, and then it should be first time boot. Allow access to this. Allow. Just waiting for this to boot up, really. Come on, then. There we are. Right, so when it's the first time boot, you, you this is the window you see. So eight, that's my serial number. I just need to get my numbers in there that they gave me. So I'm just going to find them a minute. Definitely got them here. Right. Um, there we are. So my uh, node number is 79203. Seven nine two oh three, and my room number is eight nine two oh three. Now, eight nine. This is two oh three. And the benefits of having using the the box. You know, we're all in now. The benefits of using the box is that you can create your own FM room. That's and the and the other thing is I'll just click. Should we do our location while we're here? See if it reads it. Oh, it's trying. No, nope. so let's just put in 52 here. I always put 52. It's not exact location, but it's near enough. 52 um, north, and then we'll just put 2 here, and then 
nine three. I'm pretty sure I put here nine three. Just do that for now. We put show position data as well. Uh, oh, it's west, isn't it? It's west. No, it doesn't want me to do that, of course. Maybe we'll do it in a bit. <laughs> uh, click OK. All right, well, we're all up and running. Just turn it down. So now we use the FTM 300, as we'll call it the donor radio. And um, we've got the uh, HOI box here. And if I want to talk or listen, I use that. And if I want to switch to analog mode, I just go back to the software and go file, transceiver, and look. When I'm not connected, I can switch to analog mode. There's so much more you can do with this, but at the moment, yeah, it's all working fine. Thanks for watching my video. I'm going to have fun playing around with this. Bye for now.